Mexico. I'm incredibly insulted by the remarks. I, I was waiting for this. Of course you were. Good. But, hey, I'm a friend of Freedom Fest. Good. I believe in freedom. I believe in the rule of law. Good. I believe in property rights. My heart goes out to Mr. Jamil. Good. There are illegal immigrants that are horrible and terrible. There are also legal immigrants that are horrible and terrible. It's true. So it's a question about rule of law. I am going to ask a question. Ask a question, please. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there was Donald Trump uh, facing a um, hostile uh, audience member over the weekend. Joining us now is Steve Moore, distinguished visiting fellow at the Heritage Foundation, former senior economic writer for the Wall Street Journal. Uh, check it out, heritage.org. Hello, Stephen. Hi, Steve. Good to talk to you. So let, let, let's, before we get to China, which I do want to get to with you um, and the markets there and what it means, uh, let's talk about Donald Trump. Uh, you were uh, you were at um, uh, Freedom Fest, correct? I was. I, I did my big debate with Paul Krugman on Thursday and uh, knocked him down a number of times <laughs> on the campus. Uh, but then uh, I left before uh, Trump arrived because he arrived on Saturday at the tail end of the meeting. But I heard a lot about it, and you know he drew a huge crowd. And look, Trump is Trump is a hot commodity right now in the Republican primary uh, race. There's no doubt about it. Where do you stand? Because you are a, shall we put it, a kind of sore of Republican candidates. I know you haven't endorsed anyone. I also know you've worked, as you've told us, uh, on, on the flat tax proposal yep, by Rand yep. Paul. Uh, yes. But you know, economically, perhaps, or in, in any way. I mean, because your forte is economics, and Trump is a, a, a multi-billionaire. So, where does he? What do you think of him? Uh, look, I, first of all, I do not agree with a lot of his ideas. Let me start by that, and I haven't endorsed him. But what I'm going to say, I think, is important that a lot of people are overlooking, which is that Donald Trump has really tapped into something very big uh, and very powerful politically, which is this uh, hostility that Americans have towards Washington, that Americans have come to understand that Washington is corrupt, it's incompetent, there's too much cronyism, brings in way too much money and doesn't spend it very wisely. And, and that's a theme that cuts across Republicans, independents, and even some Democrats. And Donald Trump is running a campaign basically saying, I'm going to come in and throw the bums out. I'm going to fire people. We're going to make Washington work. We're going to bring in somebody like myself who's a manager who knows how to make a company uh, you know, productive and efficient. That's a powerful message, Steve. And you know, the more the Republican establishment and all these, you know, um, political insiders in Washington attack him, uh, the better he does, because most Americans don't have any respect for the political insiders in Washington. So it's a very anti-Washington and anti also anti-party. You know, if you look at the polls, people don't like the Democratic Party and they don't like the Republican Party very much. And Perot's, I mean, not Perot, but he's running a Perot-type campaign. Uh, Donald Trump is almost running as almost a kind of independent of the party's campaign. Yeah, well, God forbid he runs as an independent uh, in the race. That would hurt the Republicans oh, that a lot. Would, that would kill him, and that would be it. And there are some, believe me, there are conspiracy theorists out there who say that's what this is all about. He did give a lot of money to Hillary in the past, and more money to Democrats than Republicans in the past. So he says over and over that he's a conservative Republican, and I'll take him at his word, and I like him. Uh, and I like what he's doing. But, you know, there are those uh, doubters out there. All right, let's move well, on. Let's not forget that Ross Perot was one of the people who handed Bill Clinton the presidency. That's what right? I mean, with less than 50% so, you know, of the you're vote. Exactly yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so let's move on to, um, uh, to China. Um, the collapse of the Chinese market, is that a wake-up call? Should that be a wake-up call to us? Well, first of all, China, you know, people have been focusing so, so much on Greece, and Greece is a disaster area. And by the way, this new mail, bailout of Greece isn't going to help at all. It's actually just going to, you know, sh sh dust this under the carpet, and it's going to reappear in six months or a year. But with China, China is, you know, the, the major, major player on the uh, international markets. And next to the United States, they're the second most important country in the world. So the fact that they've inflated this huge bubble in their economy and that it's starting to deflate, and burst, that is trouble for everyone involved in the world economy because China is such a major trading partner and such a huge impact on the overall level of world GDP. So it is something to be nervous about. But you know, China doesn't really fully get the free market model. They don't. And, and every time there's a problem, the central planners in Beijing think they can solve it by tweaking this, tweaking that. And we're looking at maybe another you know, like we have the United States, a QE1, QE2, QE3, all these monetary infusions. What 
China is looking at doing is spending more like our stimulus plan and printing more like our quantitative easing plans. And Steve, as you know, we've talked about this many times, that hasn't worked in the United States. Why would it work in China? Yeah, well, okay, and, and you mentioned Greece, uh, that it's only put, what, I, I hate to say that what Obama always says, but it's just kicking the can down the road? Well, Greece is a disaster, and Gre the story of Greece is not being told enough in the media. What is the big headline story here, Steve? It is that Greece is a socialistic state. It's a giant welfare state with too many people sitting in the wagon and not enough people or uh, workers available to, to pull the wagon, and the wagons come to a full stop. And now they think they can get the Germans to pull the wagon or Americans to pull the wagon or the IMF to pull the wagon or you know the French and the Spani Sp Spaniards. To and everybody say, no, we're not going to pull the wagon for you. And, and that means that this new uh, loan, it's not going to change fundamentally the dysfunction of the Greek economy. And look, Larry Kudlow and I have written about this, but you know what Greece has to do is exactly the opposite of what they're doing, and even in this rescue package. They shouldn't be raising taxes, Steve. They should be lowering taxes. They should have a flat tax. They should be privatizing. They should be selling off assets. You know, maybe one of the Greek islands should be sold. I mean, <laughs> they've got to come up with money because their economy isn't working. Yeah. Well, it's not a pretty uh, economic picture. Very quickly, 10 seconds. Interest rates going up here in September? Depends a lot, a lot what happens in China and, and Greece. If this eco world economy continues to falter, then no, the Fed will wait. All right. All right. Stephen Moore, great to talk to you. Distinguished visiting fellow at the Heritage Foundation, his brand new title. Congratulations. Lloyd Grove at the Daily Beast is next. Don't go away.